Hey guys, I was just editing this video. Um, I wanted to make a quick introduction for the second part, just because there is a few errors that I run into near the end of this video. So it is really important that you guys watch the whole thing. Um, because I do fix those errors at the end. And if you don't watch it, you're not going to find the fix and you're going to wonder uh, what was going on. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And yeah. So now we're going to move on to, uh, I, I don't know, I would say the more fun stuff, which is the AI. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting um, and maybe slightly more advanced because what we've done right here is pretty well just basic coding, um, just running through a bunch of different functions. So I'm just going to go into my main function here now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit this, uh, this little section that I've written here. Now, this is just because um, the way that I'm going to do things is I'm, our computer move is going to return a move to us. So I, what I want to say is I want to say move is equal to computer move like that. Okay. And then after that, we're not going to print the board yet because we want to check something. I want to say if move is equal to zero, and this is going to mean that our computer move uh, function was not able to come up with a move either because the board is full from the player moving into the last position or for any other strange reason. We're just going to say print tie game like that, because if there's no more moves that the computer can do, then it must simply be a tie game. Otherwise, that means we got a move that wasn't zero. So it was one to nine. We're just going to insert that move into the board. And in this case, what do we call it? Letter, insert that letter or whatever. In this case, our computer is going to be O. It's going to be board like so. And then we're going to print a little message just telling our user what happened. Um, and this is also just to break things up so it's easier to see the um, the grid that we're going to print out. And I'm just going to say computer placed N. And then in this case, we'll do two backslashes again. And O in position comma move like that and then after that i'm just gonna do a colon um because why not all right after we do this then we're gonna print the board because we wanted to wait until we've inserted the letter into the board before we print it out and then that's pretty much it for our computer move um little I don't know, series of instructions here. So now we can move into the actual AI. So pretty much the way that this is going to work is we're going to follow a really basic algorithm. And the algorithm is going to have five steps. The first step is going to say, is there a move that we can do that's going to result in us winning? If there is, let's take that move because that means the game's going to be over and we win as the computer. The next step is going to say, okay, so we can't win on a move. Is there a move that the player can do on their next turn that is going to make them win the game? If we find that move, then what we're going to say is, no, we're not going to let you do that. We're going to block that move by moving into that position. After that, we say, okay, so I can't win. The player can't win. So it's not as important where we move. So we're going to decide on, we're going to pick a corner to move to. All right, if there's no corners to move to, they've all been filled up. We're gonna check if the center's been taken. If the center has not been taken yet, we're gonna take the center. And then after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move to any open edge. And, and the edges, um, I mean, are pretty straightforward. They're not the corner and they're not the center, right? So that is the five main steps, I believe. Was that four or five? I don't know, four or five main steps that we're gonna follow as the computer and we're gonna run through that algorithm to determine where we're gonna move. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to make a list of possible moves and possible moves is going to be any empty square um, still left on the board. So to do this, I'm just going to say possible moves is equal to, I believe I did like a little four thing here. I'm just going to have a look at my old code because I did it pretty efficiently. Yeah. So we're going to say X for X in or X for X um, letter in numerate board. Now you might not know what all this means, but I'll explain it in one second. If letter equals equals blank and X does not equal zero. Okay. So this um, looks kind of confusing, but pretty much what we're going to, what we're saying here is we're running a for loop uh, and I'm just do this all in one line just because it's faster. I'm going to say for X letter. So this is going to be our um, indice and this is going to be the actual value uh, in a numerate board. So what a numerate does is it gives us 
all the indices and the actual values of the things in our list. So for example, in board, it's going to give us something like zero blank space, one X, um, two O, uh, and it's going to be stored appropriately in X and in letter. And then we're going to check, and this is just in the same line. I just write it because it's faster. If the letter is blank, so meaning we don't have something there and the indice is not zero because we, we always have that blank indice at the beginning of our list. So we don't want the computer to think that they can move into the zero position um, because that's not allowed. So that's why I just put this in X cannot equal zero. So this just checks the indices of all the um, possible positions we can move into that aren't already filled. And then it puts it in a list. So it'll generate a list like one, four, five, six, something like that, whatever uh, positions are, aren't yet full. Okay, so that's what possible moves does. Now after that, I'm just going to set a default move variable here equal to zero. So that when we get to the end of our program, if we haven't yet found a move to do, we're going to return the move, which is going to be zero. And then we're going to say tie game um, in our program. Okay, so now we have to go through the first step. And the first step was to check if there's a move that we can do that would result in a win. Now, there's a few ways that you can do this. The way that I've kind of figured out um, is the most efficient way to do it. And it, it makes the most sense. What we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of uh, the board. We're going to move, we're going to check every single empty position um, and see if when we move into that position uh, in the copy of our board, if it's a winning position or not. Um, that might sound confusing. It's hard to explain, but let me just go through the code with you guys. So since we're going to have to check if we win and then we can check if the player can win on their next turn, let's do this um, in a little for loop. So I'm going to say for let in, and this just stands for letter O, because that's going to be our letter and then X like this. So what this is going to do is it's first going to check um, the, uh, to see if O's can win, and then it's going to check if X's can win. Now I'm going to say for I in possible moves. So this is going to give us all of our positions, like one, three, whatever ones are blank. We're going to make a board copy, simply called board copy. And to do this, you could uh, make an alias, which, which would be just doing this. But if you did this, that would mean when you reference board copy in your program, um, and you change something about board copy, it would actually change the original list, uh, our original, original board list. So what we need to do to make a clone is to put a colon like this so that the program knows we don't want to just reference this with a new name. We want to actually make a copy of it and create a new space in memory for that. Um, I can go through that in another video, how exactly that works uh, in Python with, uh, what do you call it? I think there's something called like immutable and mutable. I believe that's what they called variables because lists are mutable. That's why you can do something like that. Um, anyways, let's move on to the next step. I'm going to say board copy I equals let. Now what this is going to do is we've made the copy of our board. Um, now we're going to simply place our letter, which is going to be either O or X based on which one we're checking into the indice in the for, uh, in the for loop of possible moves. So for the first empty position is uh, let's say one, which is going to be top left. We're simply going to say that top left is equal to O. And then now we're going to check if that results in a winning, uh, in a winning game for us. So to do that, we're going to say if is winner, give it a board. And in this case, it's going to be board copy and a letter. And the letter is going to be the current letter that we're checking in this case, O um, at the beginning and then X later. And then if that's true, we're going to say move equals I return move. So let me go back through this Oops, one more time, um, just in case anything's confusing. We're going to check through O's and we're going to check through X's. We first have a look through all the possible moves that we can do. And that's any empty space, which we've defined up here. We're going to create a board copy, which is going to be a copy of our original board. And then going through each possible move, we're going to place a letter into that um, empty position in our copy of the board. We're going to check if that board copy is a winner or not. So if we win with that, and if it is, we're just going to say that's our move and we're going to return that and we're going to get out of um, computer move function because we're just going to continue because that's the move we want to do. It's going to win for us. Now, same thing goes for here, except now we're checking if the player can win. So we're saying, okay, so if we're a player, where would we have to move to win? If we find a position where we can win on the board, well, we don't want the player to win. So we're going to move into that position to block them by doing the same thing here. And that is pretty much it for the first two steps. So that's two steps done in one. We check if we can win, we check if the player can win, and then we move appropriately. 
now it gets a little bit easier and we want to check if any corners are open so say no there's no position where we can win there's no position where the player can win we want to move to any open corner but we don't want to be predictable so we have to find all the open corners and we're going to randomly decide which one we want to move into say corners that are open equals blank list and say for i in possible moves if i in and the corner is going to be one three seven nine I believe that's it. We're gonna say corners open dot append I like that. So now we say okay, so we check through all the possible moves. If any of those possible moves are either one, three, seven, or nine, we're gonna add that into our open corners. And now we're gonna just check um we're gonna randomly select one of those corners to move into. So I'm just gonna say if the length of oops, why am I typing it the other way? Corners open is greater than zero. Now we're gonna say move equals select random and we're gonna pass it our list of corners open like that and then we're gonna return that move. Now the reason that I needed to check if our list was greater than zero is because say no corners are open and we try to run this function that we're gonna create later, it'll crash. It's not gonna work because there's nothing in the list. So how does it randomly select um, an indice in the list, it can't. So we check if there's more than one or if there's more than zero, we're gonna randomly select. If it's just one, it's automatically gonna select that one um, and then it's gonna move into that corner. Okay, so now we've checked if the corners are open. The next uh, step in our algorithm is to check if the center is open. So we say, okay, no one can win here um, with any of the moves, none of the corners are open. All right, let's check if the center is open. So we're gonna say if five in possible moves, and we'll say move, equals five, not my, move equals five, return move like so. Pretty straightforward. And then the next one is take any edge. I'm gonna copy all this cause it's gonna be the exact same thing except with edges. And in this case, I'm gonna say edge is open. And here it's say edge is open, edge is open and Edge is open, and then we just need to change this to be the edges, which are gonna be two, four, six, and eight. And there we are. Now, after that, after all of that, I'm actually just gonna take this out of here because if we've gone through everything, we've gone through all of this code that we just wrote, no edges are open, no corners, the center's not open, we can't make a winning move, then we're simply gonna return zero because that means there's no possible moves that we can make. All right, so now, we need to write our last function, which is select random. Now this one is really straightforward. In here, you're just gonna start by importing random. And then I'm gonna say, I need a random number within a range of uh, the length of, what am I saying, board? This should not be board, sorry, this should be li. I'm just gonna stand for list. I'm gonna say ln, which is gonna stand for length, is gonna be the length of our list. I'm gonna say, R, which is going to stand for random number, equals random dot rand range between zero, or actually, yes, zero, between zero and ln. And then we're going to return li r, like so. So, what this is going to do is we're going to create a random number between zero and the length of our list. Now remember, if the length of our list, if we have a list that looks like this, one, two, three, the length of our list is three, but the maximum indice is two. So when we use this rand range, if this is three, it'll never give us the number three, it'll only give us zero, one, two. So that works well for us. Uh, and then we're gonna return that, and that's gonna be our move. And I believe we set that here. We say move yes, it's equal to select random, edge is open. Now let's have a quick look through our code, see if there's anything that I need to change. I believe that's everything. So let's go ahead and run the program and we just get a slight error here. Let's just see how I wrote that over here. Cause I know you can do this. I just don't know exactly how to write it properly. What's wrong with this or maybe this needs to be in the same line or something. Let's see if we crash again. Or uh, these need to be in the same line. Okay, so that's annoying. But anyways, just backspace all these and they should work. Okay, now let's try it. 
missing one potential argument board so print board wherever we write print board we're just gonna have to throw board in there so let's go down into our main function because I believe that's where we write it I'm just gonna say board board wait up here print board. Like that. let's run it now and there we go tie game now that's not exactly what's supposed to happen is it ah this I believe this is why so in our board count this needs to be changed from false to true my bad guys now we can run it okay please select a position to place an x between one and nine one error what's our error must be an integer or slices not a list board position pause equals letter letter indices must be line six and insert letter okay so the error here um sorry it just took me a second i just paused the video there because i had to find it is in insert letter i accidentally wrote board this needs to be move like this uh my bad about that guys and let's try it one more time there we go so now everything's working so we move into position two our computer decides to move into position seven we're going to move into position five it decides to move there let's see if it takes the winning move we'll go to position one it takes the winning move and it wins all right so that is pretty much it for how to make a tic-tac-toe game in python um Again, I'm not sure how many, uh, what do you call it, tutorials or how many videos this is going to be. Uh, if you guys want to make it so that you can restart the game, uh, it's really easy. All you have to do is make a while loop down here. So you just say while true and then put main in here. And if you wanted to, you could put something like input um, play again, question mark like that. And then they would just have to hit enter to play again. I'll let you guys figure that one out because it's pretty straightforward. Anyways, other than that, this has been it for how to make a tic-tac-toe game in Python. Um, sorry if there was a few little bugs we ran into here. It is hard when I'm coding this all at one time and trying to explain everything. If you guys have any other questions or concerns, please make sure you um, leave a comment down below because I'm sure myself or someone else would be happy to help you out. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you again in the next one.